Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the Ripple Effect podcast. We are so glad that you have joined us this week, whether you're watching this or listening to this online. We are excited to be with you here today. Here in our studios, I am joined by Brian Sevitz, uh, and we've got Aaron Reeves with us today. We'll get to him here in a little bit. But before we get started, we want to let you know about the sponsor of the week. The sponsor this week is... That's my drum. Good. Uh, uh, sunscreen. And we only had a tiny little bottle of sunscreen. Where'd you find this? Did you have it? I have that in my office for like when I decide to run home or something. Absolutely. And it was there from last year. Uh, and it's a 70. You're up to 70 SPF. Do you burn? Well, you know, oh yeah, I've always burned bad. And then after I got that little skin cancer oh, last year, yeah. I'm like, I've already been more diligent Absolutely. this year, Absolutely. which is probably too late, you know. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> Aaron, do you burn? Uh, no, I turn red as a lobster and then tan out. And then tan out. Mm. I uh, I will burn once usually, like a good burn at the start of the mm-hmm. summer. But it is uh, summertime, and uh, it, it means that there's uh, there are lots of activities for kids going on, but some some things have gone off and some things have come back on. And uh, it's been pretty chill for, for me. Yep. And for you, right? There's craziness. It's not crazy for Brian. There's craziness. You got uh, you got railroad days and all sorts of stuff. That's the thing. I'm mean, kind of in charge of the railroad days committee. And uh-huh. I said summer kind of starts when that's over for me. Absolutely. <laughs> but, Absolutely. <clears throat> so uh, make sure you put on your sunscreen. And we hope that you're going to enjoy the start of summer. Um, and whatever it was in your head that you're like, this is what I want to accomplish this summer. This is what I want to do. Uh, we hope that you uh, either do that or that it wasn't very important and, uh, and you enjoy the summer anyway. Um, we want to give you a recap of this past week. We had a great Sunday at Timberlake Christian Church, and this past week we continued our series called Unqualified, and we were talking through this week, we were talking about Deborah and uh, her influence in the nation of Israel. And I just wanted to ask both of you, uh, I'll ask you about your Sundays, but because of Deborah was this week, what is, uh, was there a lady in your life that has shown uh, and given you great wisdom uh, that you would turn to that was like, hey, this is someone that's given me great wisdom, good godly advice, like a Deborah? I, I have several. I mean, and I think I always default to family, okay. my mom and, and grandma. Um, but if I go beyond that, it would be um, a lady in our church growing up her name was Maisie, mm-hmm. and I had her I mean, as a small church, so I had her as a teacher when I was younger. Um, I'd say she taught like what we have the junior worship, you know, age group, mm-hmm. but it was all volunteer there, the the staff and teachers and everything. And and then when we got older, she would invite us to like her house, mm-hmm. make homemade bread and Bible study mm. for teenagers. Yeah. And just a lot of, I mean, sometimes I feel like it was she saw some of the youth group doing certain things or whatever, and so she had a pointed Bible study <laughs> kind of aimed at them. This week I've noticed. But more than anything, she's like, I don't, we didn't have, um, the church gradually developed a little better student ministry, but honestly wasn't a well-rounded mm-hmm. youth ministry there, and I think she kind of took it upon herself to make sure the kids that moved out of that junior church age group didn't fall off the radar and just did that through ministry in our home. But I can think of a lot of things that just um, Bible study, looking at the Bible for what it is with no agenda, a lot of that just came from her. Oh, that's great. And for me, I have, I could say my mother and my grandmother as well, but specifically there was a lady who was, one of the people in charge of the Christian Motorcycle Association youth group I was a part of back in Oklahoma. And a lot of the leaders really loved on all of us while we were there. But uh, this lady, um, when I went above and beyond and actually interacted with us outside of those events, Mm -hmm. she had us over to her house with her and her husband and their kids. And we pretty much did everything. And she really modeled both in advice and in how to, how to live, what it means to be a loving Christian. Mm. And uh, back then in high school, prayer was really something I struggled with. It was hard for me to want to do it. But uh, she's someone who really 
proved to me that prayer was effective and encourages me even now today through uh, with my marriage to my wife. She's always in contact with us and is always looking out for us and making sure we're doing good. Yeah. I don't think it's a mistake that in Proverbs, wisdom is described as, as female. It's always described as female. And we could talk about the men in our lives who have impacted us and shaped us, but we also can't forget the women in our lives who have been a, a display of godly wisdom for us as well. Um, so if you missed the Sunday, I hope that you uh, go tlcc.church. Go to tlcc.church and catch up. Um, it was a great song service. I thought the music was amazing. Um, we had uh, some time of communal prayer, uh, which we've been doing more lately. And, uh, and then you can catch up on the sermon as well. Um, I, I, when I ask that question, I guess I should answer it too. The, I, I think of ladies like uh, Janet Farmer and Irene Pelfrey and some of the ladies here who have been so encouraging. Um, there was a lady uh, uh, from the church that we came from who she, uh, she was one-armed, she had one arm, she had a little nub here, uh, had an accent when she was younger. Her name was Eleanor, and she um, was so encouraging. She used to play like semi-pro tennis. She was like, she told herself early on, if I can tie my shoe after the accident, I can do anything. So <laughs> she learned to tie her shoe, she raised boys, very honorary boys, but she was a, a faithful woman who loved Jesus. So be thankful for the people in your life. And uh, if you have some uh, ladies in your life that really encourage you, uh, make sure to encourage them and tell them how much they mean to you. Okay, we got to get to the TLCC top three uh, of the week. A couple things that you need to know um, going on here at Timberlake Christian Church that you can be aware of. Brian, what do we got first? Okay, first one is men's group, Saturday. It's at Hardee's, 7.30. And... Yeah, you don't have to prepare anything. Calling all uh, men. Last month was great, mm -hmm. so we hope that all those guys and more of you will show up. So it's basically a Devo breakfast if you want to buy it, but you don't have to, no obligation, and then some prayer time together. Yeah, and the goal of this is not, it, it, the goal of this is just community coming together. Uh, men praying together, encouraging one another. So uh, it's not going to be put you on the stand or you know make you feel like you have to take a test or quiz or anything like that. Uh, it's really about um, being together, being godly men who are encouraging each other in their walk with Jesus. So uh, we'd encourage all of you guys to come on out 7.30 this Saturday. A.M. 7.30 a.m. at Hardee's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 7.30 a.m. at Hardee's. Okay, what else? Uh, second... We were going to mention about VBS again. This is, what, Sunday was 37 days away or something like that. So we're even closer than that now. And the volunteer information, registration information, as well as donation information are all on our website. If you just go to the events tab, click on uh, the VBS launch pad, it has all that. Jesse did a great job of making kind of a special website just for VBS this year. Mm -hmm and all the info's in one spot. She's also linked to that through our Facebook page. So if you're like on Facebook now at the end of the podcast, scroll back a few posts and you'll see that from last week. And um, one of the things that we wanted to specifically mention about that is you can donate things off of the wall. And what that means is you take a, a star off the wall that says, I will bring this to donate or to let you borrow. Five boxes of pudding or yeah, something that yeah. you, from your house. There that were we could like use. ten mason jars, yeah. things like that. They yeah. were just to borrow, and then they give them back to you when it's over. Or they've done something this year for those of you. You know, a lot of people have become digital shoppers. Mm -hmm. I mean, after COVID, especially, yeah. and um, there's a special Amazon wish list set up just for VBS. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a baby registration or something, except it's for VBS. And if you just want to go buy something off of there, it'll be shipped to the church. And I think it's super yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you don't have time to like go shopping and you're like, I still want to participate, just get on the Amazon wish list. You'll see it there on the launch pad um, where donations is, and you can go right to the wish list, order something, and it'll be sent right to the church. And uh, we'd really appreciate any support you can give. That really helps everybody get involved. Um, with VBS. And the last one is just camp. You know, camp's going on now. Uh, the 
I don't remember what it's called. Seed Lane. Seed Overnight Lane. camp was already over. Mm-hmm. They started Timber Week Sunday, which is high school, but we still have Wildwood Week. She said boys is almost full. Is that what? Yeah, Mary said that the boys, because the boys' cabins are a little bit more limited than the girls' cabin. It's almost full. I think mm-hmm. they're they're reaching that 30-plus number of boys. Yeah. So if you have a, a boy, student, or child, or grandchild that you're sending to camp, you want to get the registration in because once they reach their max, they have to start turning people away. Yeah, and they will. You should not expect to just walk in at Wildwood. Uh, usually, it's fine to just walk in and register for camp. Don't assume that for the junior high week. I think that's awesome yeah. that they have several uh, middle school students coming this year. Mm-hmm. But that will be followed up with Acorn Day, the next uh, Saturday. I think it is. Mm-hmm. That's they don't have an overnight. It's just a day camp, and then. Sapling is the elementary ages will be the last week. Yeah, and then we'll tell you later on about camp celebration Yeah, and that stuff. Well, there you go men. We're gathering Saturday at 7 30 a.m. At Hardy's if you are interested in VBS go to the TLCC.church website and you'll see uh, on the events there the launch pad for the VBS or you can catch it on Facebook as well There's donations and some cool ways to do that through the launch pad and then camp especially if you're going to be going to the junior high week you got to get your kids registered now because it's filling up very fast all right that's it today we have aaron with us in the studio aaron is a student at timberlake christian no this is timberlake christian church at <laughs> central <laughs> christian college of the bible um i like to do something on the podcast with people that we're introducing uh, I'm going to put 30 seconds on my timer, and you have 30 seconds to tell us, <laughs> like, if, if if people don't know anything about you, what are the most important things for them to know about you? Okay? okay. Mm-hmm. All right. You ready? 30 seconds. Go. Uh, I'm from Omulga, Oklahoma. It's about 45 minutes south of Tulsa, if you know where that is. Um, I'm pursuing a bachelor's in preaching with a minor in counseling. Um my, I'm married. My wife, Lydia, is currently in Israel at the moment on a big archaeological dig and is pursuing a cross-cultural ministry degree. 15 we, seconds. We intend to probably go back to Oklahoma unless God calls us somewhere else. But uh, other than that, I think yeah. that's the basics. Whew. Okay. All right. So uh, Aaron is going to be uh, interning with us this summer at Timberlake Christian Church, not at Central Christian at Timberlake Christian Church, uh, and he's been around before. You've seen him play drums uh, here at church. Uh, you've seen him and his wife uh, here uh, attending a little bit. But he uh, decided he, well, for one, you had to do an internship. Mm-hmm. Uh, why do it at Timberlake Christian Church? Timberlake Christian Church has a really good community around it. Um, the first time I came up here to the college, almost four years ago, uh, attended here that first Sunday, and immediately was welcomed and i really liked the fact that timberlake has a lot and in, involve a lot of involvement in the community around them and so one i wanted to be a part of that for my internship and i also wanted to be able to learn from you guys so that if i do get called back to oklahoma i might be able to help influence the church i'm working at to be more involved in the community and more outreaching like you guys are mm. Brian, does it feel does it feel weird that you're we are now the ones teaching? It is it weird. Feel weird. Yeah, it is weird. Um, well, I remember when I started teaching at Central, which was like a year and a half after I graduated. Well, that was to do chapel, not really teaching, but it, it was weird. Yeah. But I was going to say, I think the first day I had Aaron Drum, uh, the security team was like, "There's this guy with red hair, or maybe an <laughs> orange hair, I don't know, walking around." And he's, he's got, trying to get in the building. He's got his hat on backwards. <laughs> All right, so for those of you who are out watching this, Aaron uh, has, uh, let's see, it's, it's I would call it uh, purplish hair. Uh, it's just on the top, the dyed on the top. And uh, yellow glasses on, uh, very Iron Man-esque glasses. Did you mean them to look like Iron Man? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> got light-sensitive eyes, so I have these, which are a little bit less tinted, so people can still see my eyes. Not have the fully polarized mm-hmm. lenses for okay. whenever I'm outside. Okay, so we got to talk about the hair. How long have you been dyeing your hair? Why do you dye your hair? Let's let's, um, let's, let's just get it out. Let's give the people what they really want. Yeah. This is what they want. I dye my I've dyed my hair. I 
think since I was 16, I, 16, 17. Was this a rebellious act or what was this? It was just something I did with one of my friends growing up. Uh, I've always been, so growing up with two sisters, doing hair, doing makeup, doing all that was a really <laughs> common thing for I me. I hear you. Preach And it. so uh, I used to dye her hair. Okay. And um, she convinced me to dye my hair with her one time and dyed the top red because I always usually keep my hair in this style with the short sides and back and the long top because right. I can pull it back if I'm doing work or I can just have it down and style it however I want. But ever since then, I liked the red and I keep it red. Mm. It's more purple currently because... I, it has become more well, purple. <laughs> the wedding I attended this last weekend, I was a groomsman. Uh -huh. And uh, Khalid, my buddy, who was getting married, was like, the girl's wearing red, and so make sure your outfit has no red in it. And as a joke, I went and I got purple dye and put it over the red and <laughs> turned into this like red-purple amalgamation. <laughs> and I'm good. Um, so you have a um, strong history of, of preachers in your family. Your dad was a preacher, is a preacher. Um, your grandpa was a preacher. Um, and you told me a little bit that like you've resisted, you resisted following in their footsteps. So just share a little bit about like um, how does God, how did God bring you to this moment? And, and what is it that you're hoping to be able to accomplish in ministry, in preaching ministry? So leading up to this moment, I, I really, like you said, I, I kind of avoided being in ministry because uh, growing up, I always had this, I, it, was, it was a great example set ahead of me of uh, my father and my grandfather, who were the kind of people that whenever everything went wrong in the church, they had the peace, of, they had the peace necessary to be able to walk in and bring people back together. Mm -hmm. And I was never really good at that because mm -hmm. I, I always am like, this is such a simple problem. Why don't we just do this solution? And I never felt like I had the proper mindset to be able to do it. And so I kind of walked away from it. But I was always of the opinion that, God, if you want me to do this, you need to make it clear. Mm. Like, don't be beating around the bush on it. You just need to straight up tell me that you want me to do this. Make the fleece really wet right now. Yeah. And everything else dry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then tell them to make it dry and everything else wet. Yeah, no, that whole cycle. Yeah. Uh, right out of high school, just went right into the workforce. And after a couple of years of work, and I get a call from my grandfather saying, if I ever get the opportunity to pursue education and to pursue ministry, to please take it. And I promised him I would and hung up knowing I'm never going to get that call. Never going to get that call. A couple minutes after getting off the phone with my grandfather, I get a call from Brick Crosswhite, who at the time was... Uh, getting hired as the head of admissions at Central, and he goes, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting this new job, and I think this is a really good spot for uh, you and David to come and attend and grow both educationally and in God. Are you interested? And I went, I don't know. I'll call, I'll call you back. And I hung out. I was like, in, in my hotel room, like, dang it, man. I called Brent back. What, what do I need to fill out? He goes, oh, no, you just need, yeah, I already got it filled out. I figured you'd say yes. And I called me back and say yes. So I already knew all your, inf all your information. Just need you to sign this. And you, we'll see you. We'll see you. And I'm like, wow. Oh, and so, yeah, four years later. Here you are. Here I am. That's awesome. So what is your, if you had a goal, like, I, I know we can't predict the future, but, you know, going into ministry, considering going into preaching, like, do you have, like, a goal in mind of, of, of how you want to be used or what you feel like God is calling you to do? What do you want to accomplish? I don't know exactly at this point in time what particularly I want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. I know that God gave me a lot of gifts. Mm -hmm. um, whenever I choose to actually use it, I'm fairly articulate mm -hmm. with my words, and I have a voice that will carry through buildings like none other. <laughs> and he gave me skills in music. And so if I'm able to find a church to lead at, whether that's as the pastor or just as a worship minister, mm. and uh, I would love to do that and also be able to continue to be a proper guide post and point my family towards God as it grows mm. with that and I expecting. Yeah. Um, and, you know the gender? Do you want to tell everybody, or do we are we, are we keeping that in house? 
Uh, keeping that in house. Oh, we're keeping it in house. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah, I don't know who's going to watch it. <laughs> I, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. No, that's good. Um, so we're excited. So if you see Aaron around and uh, you want to comment about his hair, please do so. Uh, you can laugh at him or make fun of him. That's fine. Um, but welcome him here. He'll be with us this summer. And uh, we've got some plans for some curriculum we're working on. We've got some plans for some sermon series. Uh, and you're going to get a chance to hear from him uh, from the pulpit as well uh, sometime this summer. But we're grateful for him being here. Uh, and I'm excited to continue to work with you uh, this summer. Um, Brian has the uh, blessing of the week for us. And so we're going to close out this uh, podcast with the blessing of the week. Okay. Um, I was telling him earlier, I didn't like prepare something, but I, last time that happened to me, I just I like to for spring a, stuff. I look for a common thread uh-huh. uh, for the blessing, and I think it's encouragement. Like you were saying, somebody encouraged you uh, to apply or to go into ministry at the beginning. You were talking about you know people like uh, Janet Farmer. She's been such an encouragement to our family. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple weeks ago, which our family has had. I've had a lot of anxious, discouraging days, not because of things going on at church, because of like my truck breaking down and just, just life stuff. I mean, it's nothing abnormal. But I said in one of the other podcasts, like I'm a planner. I like to have my ducks in a row and control things like that. And it's just not worked out for me recently <laughs> with anything. And Daniel knows that. Like you think you got something solved, and there's three new problems. Uh, but none of them were like that big of a deal. And, and, but on one of those days, I got a letter from Janet Farmer. Oh, wow. And it was like, you were just the right person. We needed it at just the right time. And I've like seen you grow. And I've loved hearing you become more of a preacher, a confident preacher through the years. Just things like that. And they mean a lot. And um, in, the, in First Thessalonians, it talks about you know, encouraging one another, building one another up. And I think Daniel does this very well. Like, you know, some of us are just sort of like, uh, that's in, a, in, a, in our DNA, like to be a good encourager. But we all should be that. And so I think my blessing slash challenge, which that's what you I always said bring a on, challenge. Uh, I love it. Is be encouraged. Mm-hmm. Like, we hope we are encouraging through even this podcast and the things that we say and do on Sunday. You know, we hope that we are encouraging. And that you're encouraged through this ministry, but also um, be an encourager. And if you're um, like, don't take people for granted. Mm-hmm. And and I've had to work on this. Like, uh, I assume people know things, but yes, yeah, sometimes we have to tell them that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're having a bad day, and they need to hear those words or read them in a little note. And so that's my encouragement slash challenge slash blessing for you this week is uh, be encouraged and. And you just, like, we were at a ball game. Uh, well, we've been in a lot of ball games, you know, and, like, almost every night of the week. And last, yesterday we had two, two ball games. Both boys played, and I'm looking, and all these parents are just so encouraging, mm-hmm. uh, especially on Dawson's team. Of all the different players, not just their own kid, you right, know. They're, them on, they're yelling and the screaming hands. for all the kids every time anything good happens. Even when bad things happen, they're still <laughs> encouraging because they don't want them to give up, you know. And I'm like, as adults, we lose a little bit of that. And yeah, we don't want to like cheer people on for doing something wrong. But but we ought to be a little bit more of a cheerleader for each other sometimes mm-hmm. like that. Do you think sometimes, I'm, I'm getting into your blessing now, so you tell me this No, now. it's fine. But do you think sometimes we it's hard for us to be that encouragement for someone else because we're needing it? And it's, like, it's hard to give what we are wanting ourselves. Because I found them like the... The times where I'm encouraged is when I choose to be a blessing to someone else, and doing that helps you yeah. feel that way. Well, and I think, you know, I know for me, and my wife will tell you this better than anybody, when my when I'm absorbed with something like my truck keeps breaking down, it affects every area of what I do. Mm-hmm. It affects work. I'm in a bad mood. Uh, it affects when I walk in the door. Mm-hmm. She's like, you're, you're somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And I think, yeah, if you're going through discouragement mm. uh, for some reason, uh, it's sometimes hard to, you know, turn that around mm. and not convey discouraging, you know, facial expressions, words, whatever. But 
but yet that's kind of what we're called to do sometimes. Not to be fake, but to say, you know, I have Jesus, I've got His hope, His confidence, He's, uh, we were reading something, Preston and I um, had just kind of a dad-son night last Friday, I think it was, and and whatever we were reading through and studying was like preaching at me big time because of all this stuff you know going on at the house which they see that I mean kids kids see all that and they're the recipients of your frustration and stuff a lot of times and, and I just had to sort of apologize and say yeah I know that I haven't exactly been living out exactly what we just read in this little Devo mm-hmm. <laughs> the best yeah well, that's a great blessing. Be an encourager uh, because you don't know what people are going through and you also don't know how impactful it can be when you cheer someone else on. It can change everything for them. Well, thank you for joining us this week on the Ripple Effect Podcast. We hope that you have a blessed week and we will see you next time. See you guys. Bye.